Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Ushanka Show, stories about life in the Soviet Union. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи! В эфире программа Ушанка Шоу. Истории про жизнь в СССР. Not long ago, one of my viewers sent me kind of silly questions. Why do Gopniks always squat? What is the reason uh, for squatting? And I thought I laughed, and then I thought about it. It's actually, you know, it's a good topic to discuss. Why do Gopniks squat? And actually, why generally Russians and Soviet people, uh, for that matter, like to squat. But before we begin, let's have a quick lesson of the Russian language. Urok ruskava yazika. When we say in Russian that someone is sitting like a squatting, he is sedit в присядку or на корточках. В присядку на корточках. Well, first of all, let's begin about uh, Gopniks and their squatting style when they hanging out outside with their buddies. And that's a separate topic to discuss why there's so much just crazy interest in a Gopnik subculture, but I'm planning to make a separate video about it. So why do Gopnik squat? And the answer is very simple. Потому что в ногах правды нет. В ногах правды нет, which you can translate. There is no truth in your legs, which means just standing is kind of tiresome for your legs. So actually it's easier when you squat it's uh, way easier on your legs. But joke aside, just because uh, Gopnik doesn't want to have his uh, cool Adidas pants get dirty and there is no really benches around to sit down, they just have to squat. This way they keep their clothes clean and uh, they can hang out for an extended period of time. Now, other people, and including uh, Gopniki, if they hang out somewhere in the park where there are benches, they'll just sit on the bench and uh, drink their beer or vodka and uh, have a good time. So squatting, it's absolutely not a part of this Gopnik subculture. There's no rules about proper way you squat. I found it just hilarious when the people, you know, when I published a couple of my pictures of squatting for fun, they were correcting me that I'm not doing proper squatting. I never heard of it. I never knew there is some kind of rules. And uh, I'm going to talk about all that stuff in my separate video. But as I mentioned in the beginning of my video, it's not only Gopniki who likes to squat, it's just a normal uh, cultural phenomena among the Soviet people and Russian people. It's kind of distilled in your behavior from early childhood. I probably should mention that part in my uh, videos about doing laundry in the Soviet Union. If you remember, laundry usually was done by hand. It was a cumbersome, uh, hard process. We didn't have really good detergents. So uh, women had a hard time doing laundry. It was a lot of work. So, of course, you reflect that on your children to make sure that they don't bring dirty clothes home often. So from the early childhood, every Soviet kid learned one thing, that grass stains are the worst to remove. So if you come home and your knees will be covered with green marks from skidding on the grass or kneeling on the grass or your butt from sitting on the grass, your mom would yell at you or she can actually spank your butt. So as a kid, I learned right away, never ever sit on the grass or kneel on the grass. You always, if you have to, you squat. Which brings me to this funny moment when I came to America for the very first time in 1995. And uh, as my journey to America began uh, by arriving to New York City, and if you read my book, American Diaries 1995, I talk about it. So we stayed first day at the Columbia University right in New York and Camp Counselors USA so that's the organization that was uh, hiring people all over the world to come and work in American camps that's how I came to America next day in the morning they had so-called orientation so everyone who arrived a uh, day pri prior uh, they told us to go outside and we're gonna have you know conversation and some silly games uh, and we talk about your, you know, future work at the American camps. We explain you some culture. So around 20 to 30 young people from all over the world, you know, you're talking Australia, Great Britain, Germany, so Western Europe, and then of course uh, some folk from the former Soviet Union. And once again, we're talking 1995 when, uh, so it's uh, four years after Soviet Union went bye-bye. And it was amazing. I could easily tell where the foreigners are and when my uh, former countrymen wear not even like looking at their clothing or you know just looks of them you know hair color facial just the way they behaved on the grass every foreigner 
plumped on the grass, you know, they sit this crossing their legs, they call it Indian style sometimes. Not a single person from the former Soviet Union did that. We all were or squatting or just standing because from the early childhood we learn never ever sit down on the grass or kneel on the grass. I found it actually quite interesting. I was like, wow, look at this. Those guys are from, from the Soviet Union, just like me, because I never sat on the grass either. And another reason, of course, is because, you know, you came to America, so you brought your best clothing. So especially you won't sit on the grass and you wear the best pair of your pants or your jeans. You know, you may have some kind of pants for playing outside that you will be kind of somewhat careless, but not in your best pair. And I think I mentioned before, uh, there's one girl I used to date back in Kiev, uh, Sveta, man, she was a sweet lady. And she was so particular and careful with her clothing, she never ever even sat on public transportation. So if we were taking a bus or a subway, she was always standing and I asked her once, like, why you never sit down? There's empty spots. And she's like, I don't want to stretch uh, my uh, pants in the knee area because when you sit down, you know, you'll kind of stretch your knees. And she didn't want, she want her pants look perfect. So she never sit down anywhere on the bus or subway. So she never let me uh, do this early teenage years dream because I always was so envy when I saw on the bus or a tram, subway, you know, there's a couple, a young a boy and a girl, you know, they, he sits on the seat and the girl uh, sits on his lap. And I was so envious because like, man, it would be so sweet to have your girl, you know, uh, sitting on your lap and you feel her body and I'm be like, oh, I want to do that too when I have a girlfriend finally. So when I started dating this Sveta lady, she's like, nope, it's not happening. I'm not sitting. I'm just going to stretch my knees. So only when several years later, I began dating different Sveta and we did that on a tram. I was so disappointed because my initial excitement uh, quickly disappeared or dissolved because when I started feeling the weight, and my girl wasn't a big girl, but still, you know, she had some weight, and I was like, okay, it looks way more fun than it actually is. So after that, I was like, yeah, no, you know what, I'll let you sit by yourself, and if it's only one seat available, and we're gonna sit next to each other. I'm not doing this uh, sit on my lap thing. It's not as fun as it looks like. And what's when a topic of expensive clothing and careful attitude towards the clothing in the Soviet Union, when my parents, uh, bought me a pair of Italian Riorda brand jeans. Also, there's a separate video coming on the topic of jeans in the Soviet Union. They paid 100 rubles when my mom's salary was 150 rubles a month. I think even 130. Very expensive pants, right? Uh, so one time I was running to catch the tram and I tripped, fell. I was horrified that I will have a hole in my expensive jeans. Like, I looked, I rolled my knee, and I was like, I see I'm bleeding pretty bad. But I go, thank God, you know, I don't care about knee being damaged, you know, scratched. It's fine, as long as jeans are okay, so. All right, my friends, that's all I have for you today. If you like my long and boring stories about life in the Soviet Union, you may like my long and boring book called American Diaries 1995. That's uh, my adventures of coming to America and exploring for the very first time back in 1995. It's available on Amazon.com, or you can go on my website, Sputnikov.com. Uh, there's a paper copies available and electronic books. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye.
Hey, by the way, the cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at teespring.com. Just a friendly reminder that my book American Diaries is available on Amazon.com or shoot me an email if you would like to have a signed copy. Thank you! And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Ushanka Show. For as little as one dollar you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life and so